In 2018, a study published in the Journal of Affective Disorders surveyed 1,500 musicians and found that over 40% of them suffered from anxiety and mental health issues. And this is just one of many studies that have been published around the subject of creatives and mental health. But is it any wonder that artists and creatives suffer from anxiety and mental health when you look at what is expected of you as an artist? From the feeling of vulnerability whilst you're putting your feelings on show, the financial instability, the constant judgment. The difficulty of trying to combine emotional decision-making with practical thought processes at the same time, let alone self-isolation, you've got lack of routine, let's face it, this is not exactly a nine-to-five job, you've got the lack of measurability, I mean, after all, what does good look like? It's a very difficult question because we're constantly comparing ourselves to huge numbers that we see online which is very different from an athlete who can measure themselves against somebody else or against speed or time or weight or distance. This is subjective. So with all that in mind, what can you do to protect your mental health while you are creating and showing your feelings to the world? Well, luckily, there are tried and tested ways that can help relieve anxiety and protect your mental health. So let's look at seven ways that you can navigate this whilst you're pushing in this really difficult industry. Number one, set your goals. Have you actually thought about what your goals are? Outside of, I wanna be a rock star, I wanna fill a stadium, I wanna tour the world, I want everyone to know about my music. Great, but with those sorts of targets, we don't have anything tangible, and it's no wonder that your mental health and your anxiety is running riot. Because what we need to be thinking of, not I want to fill a stadium, but how am I going to fill the local venue? How do I get 100 people to actually pay for a ticket and come and see me? Now, if you're thinking like that, you think, well, actually, I think I could probably do that. I can understand the process of what I need to do to be able to get that point. Now, if you can do that, well, at that point, you could start to think about, well, I think I can maybe do that in another town or another city. I think maybe if I could get 100, if I make some tweaks, I could get to 150 or 200. Now we're thinking in a productive way. We're not just pulling stuff out and saying, I want to play a stadium. Because if I asked you now, how do you play a stadium? Most people would say, I've got no, I've got no clue, but I'll have to go and ask Live Nation to sort it out for me. So setting achievable goals and understanding the process will relieve some of that anxiety. Number two is organization. And I understand that most artists and creatives aren't the most organized people because they have a creative brain. But what we do need to do is we need to systemize the creativity. Because now if we can do that, what we're looking at doing is we're looking at enhancing all of the skills that you've got, but making sure that the routine, making sure the organization is funneled into you utilizing that and putting it into practice. Now this means having a less chaotic life. So for example, do you have have a calendar. I know I bang on about this all of the time, but it is so important to know what you need to achieve and when you need to achieve it. And if your calendar is actually dictating the pace of what you need to do, it takes away so much anxiety. Same thing with systems. For example, do you use your phone for notes? Do you use your phone for reminders? These small details can keep you on the path, making sure that you're achieving the things that you want to achieve over a period of time, and that will sap away all of the anxiety because you feel that you are in control. Number three is batching content. Social media content creation is one of the biggest problems when it comes to anxiety. Why? Because we are creating, but at the same point, we're not quite creating the thing that we want to be creating. We're creating in order to promote the thing that we want to be creating, if that makes sense. The problem here is you're supposed to be creating every single day. And that leads to anxiety. Be creative. Be creative again. That leads to this Groundhog Day. And all of a sudden, you're not a musician. You're not an artist. You're not a songwriter. All of a sudden, you're a social media content creator. And you didn't sign up to that. But it doesn't have to be this way. What you can do is you can batch your content. You can set up systems so that you can film an entire week's worth of content, maybe even an entire month's worth of content, in just one hour. Now, the way you do that is by systemizing. If you think about where you're going to shoot, the location, what you're going to wear, having some extra items of clothing, some extra props, things that you're going to do, things that you're going to say. Here's some examples. I'm out on a shoot. It's golden hour. Everything looks lovely. And I just say, hey, guys, I think I've written the, the song of the summer. Check it out. See what you think. And then it goes into the song. 
done, number one piece. The second piece of content is, hey, if you like artists like this, or you like artists like this, you're gonna love this track, check it out. Two really simple pieces of content, but you've made two things in a space of probably one minute, maybe two minutes. Golden Hour makes it look good, and this is a systemized approach to batching. Now, I understand you're not making the greatest content of all time, but what you are doing is you are being consistent, you're making high quality content, and you're giving people a reason to watch something. Number four is set up your ecosystem. Now, during COVID, I was traveling around quite a lot and trying to make YouTube videos whilst traveling was the main source of my anxiety. Trying to get a shot, trying to make it sound decent, trying to make it look good, trying to fit everything in. It, it was because I didn't know where I would be or what it would look like, and that to me was stressful. Whereas now, I have this office. Everything is set up. I have a camera, which I'm talking into right now. I have lights all around me. This means I have the ecosystem. It means I don't have to think about where am I going to film today? No, same thing with where am I going to work today? No, I just come in and everything I need is within arm's reach. You get to create the environment you work in so that you're not thinking about it day in, day out. Now this also applies for other systems like people. The people who are around you, the people who can help you. If they have systems, now sometimes this means it's more stressful because you're managing people instead of doing the thing, but if you can delegate, if you can find people that you trust and you can give certain things to certain people, what this means is it frees you up to do the most important things. Now this goes for locations outside of your place, whether that's a studio, whether that's places that you can do videos, whether that's gear, familiarity breeds confidence. So make sure that you have everything that you need set up and you don't need to think about it. Number five, find the gold. You wouldn't believe how many messages and comments I get every single day from artists who say, hey, what I'm doing isn't working. First thing I think is, well, there's nuance. You can't just say it is or it isn't working because certain little bits of it will be working, certain bits of it won't be working. So it's not a case of being black and white because everything is shades of gray. And your job is to seek out the bits that are working, to try and test different things. And when you find things that work, you go more in on it. And when you find things that don't work, you ignore them. It isn't as simple as saying, hey, I've put my music out and it isn't working. It's saying, what is the bit that's working? And what is the bit that isn't working. The more we find that data, the easier it is to start building and progressing and getting better results. And also on a side note to that, when you find something that works, go all in. I have this phrase which says, dig for gold. We're looking for the gold. Now, when you find the gold, what do you do? You dig it up. The amount of times that I'll get a comment from someone and be like, oh, I made this piece of content and it's going really, really well. And then the next day they do something completely different. What they've done there is they've gone digging for gold, they found found the gold and went, I found gold. And then they walked off and started digging somewhere else. I mean, it's the same thing. If you start finding out what's working in your socials, you go all in. You do that again and again and you dig for that gold. Number six, diversify your portfolio. I know that makes me sound like a financial YouTuber, I'm not, but it's the same thing. If you just say, hey, all I do is TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, great. But what happens when that isn't working? Or what happens when you're trying to build a rounded portfolio? There's so many things that you can do to promote yourself as an artist and your music. For example, you've got gigs, you've got press, you've got PR, you've got radio, you've got collabs. There's loads of things that you can do outside of just making micro content, even macro content or live content. There's so many things that you can do but are you doing them? You see, sticking to one thing means tunnel vision and that can only result in a roller coaster. One day you get great results. Hooray, this is the best day of my life. The next day it's all going wrong. It's a complete disaster. It's all going wrong. The next day the results are back up again. Oh, it's gonna be okay. The next day it's all gone wrong again. Like, you can't live like that. That is an anxiety waiting to happen. What we've got to do is we've got to spread our bets. And if something's doing well, something else is probably gonna be doing badly, but it's okay because we can start to look at what's working and what's not. And number seven is the phrase DIY. I hate the phrase DIY. I've heard it millions of times from artists. I'm a DIY artist. The problem with that is that means do it yourself. You are doing everything yourself. That is a recipe for disaster because your anxiety levels 
So now you're doing everything yourself. It should be L-I-Y. Lead it yourself. You are in control. You are responsible, but you don't have to do everything. If you do have to do everything because you literally have no one else around you, you have no infrastructure, no ecosystem, then you need to go back to the other rules. You need to have more priorities. You need to have more organization. You need to set your targets to be more achievable. It shouldn't be DIY. It should be L-I-Y. You are the leader. Lead it yourself. When it comes to calming your anxiety, we need to think back to when you started. You started because you loved it. You started because of those opportunities and experiences of maybe I'll get to play in front of someone. Wouldn't that be amazing? And then all of a sudden, now it's become about money and numbers. And that's another recipe for anxiety disaster. Whereas if we're doing this because we love it, because of the passion, because we just want to get our music out there and we want to enjoy the process, well, it's going to take a lot of the stress and anxiety away from you. And lastly, remember that every creative feels the same as you, no matter how good they are at masking it. I know I do. One minute I feel like a failure, the next minute I feel like I've got imposter syndrome, then I've got anxiety, then I've got frustration because something should work and it isn't working. No matter what the numbers are, we all feel the same. But these systems, having people to talk to, these things help. I mean, if you're feeling it right now, feel free to just leave a comment below. Even if it's just a rant and just be like, this isn't working and I'm frustrated, just getting that out of your system might be something that starts to ease your anxiety. Being a creative is an amazingly rewarding thing, but you need the systems to be able to control the power. So thanks for watching. If you can do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Come and be a part of this community. Take care of yourselves. If I can help with anything, you know I'm here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys soon.